we take another day trip out of Paris, and this time to the city of Mo. And this one will be a little bit different, partially because I'm running late, which actually that's not so different, but partially because I've been invited by the city of Mo to come out for a little bit of a day trip. So we're gonna learn about Mo together, see what it's all about. But first, I gotta find them and get on the train. And I think I'm likely to miss the train that we're taking out as a group, but um, that's okay because thankfully they leave every 10 minutes. So let's see if I let's see if I make it. Well, looks like I've got to buy my own ticket. So let's do that and then let's hop on the next train. Oh man, look at these lines. Here's helping my uh, tourist Navigo actually works for this. I didn't have time to buy a ticket and I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure that my little tourist Navigo that I've been using lately won't cover me all the way out. So if I get caught, uh, it's probably gonna cost me like 50 bucks, which whoops, that's bad. We'll see if I get, we'll see if I get to the other side of that, but I figured, you know what, I don't wanna be late. And I definitely wasn't gonna be able to get a ticket in time. And the reason I don't have a ticket is because they have a ticket for me, so I didn't need to buy one. If I was on time, I had my own little story this morning, it doesn't matter. Anyways, we're gonna go to Mo, and we're gonna have a good time. Even if we're off to a rough start. So here we go. <laughs> no check. I think I'm gonna make it. The other thing I'm gonna talk about a little bit today, but we're gonna save for tomorrow, is we're doing a scavenger hunt for a book giveaway. For those of you that wanted a physical copy of the book, you missed out on the pre-order, the Kickstarter, and you can't come to Paris to pick one up for yourself, Jody's got you covered. I'll tell you more about that later. But Kate and I are putting together a digital scavenger hunt that uh, you might wanna follow me kind of everywhere, figure out, including the newsletter. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter if you wanna get a book for free. Anyways, there was a guy walking this way that had me nervous for a second, but I think, I don't want to jinx it, but I think I'm gonna make it. Don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. Made it. All right, let's find a uh, Orly. There's an Orly, which is my favorite name in French. By the way, I don't know if you knew that, but oh, I love that name. Anyways, she's waiting for me here, apparently. And then we gotta catch up to everybody else. So hopefully she recognizes me. I should probably take off my mask. You couldn't even see that I was going, Ugh. Well, we try to figure out where Orly is. It's a beautiful area by the looks of things. Like, it was nice to get out into a little bit of forested land. There's a river, which apparently we're gonna go on a boat ride later. Looking forward to that. It's just a 39 minute ride out of Paris on the Transilien P. For the Transilian P, the P line, make all the jokes you want, it's fine, it's all fair game. So easy enough to get here, and um, I would imagine not that expensive, probably pretty cheap. <laughs> Just a few euros, but not cheap if you get caught. This town is also famous for a battle that I willingly remained ignorant to because we're gonna go to the museum dedicated to the battle, and I figured, you know what, I'm gonna learn with you. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I learned, how about that? Sounds good. All right, let's find Orly. We're only 10 minutes late, technically, so we're just behind them. Even though it feels like we're really late because we just took a 40 minute train ride by ourselves. jealous that we missed the bike ride already because it looks super super chill and apparently the bikes here are free you show up leave your identity with these guys your id and they'll let you uh leave your identity leave your id card with these guys and they'll let you roll with a bike for as long as you want over the course of the day along the river which you can swim in up here in the marne there are people over there that are looking like they're going to jump in right now and we're about to take some boats out for a spin which we wanted to do in paris but you can do here this is exactly what i needed after a couple days in provence and uh i needed another day out of paris this the timing of this could not be more perfect Wow. 
Moi aussi. C'est moi, c'est le rêve d'adulte pour moi aussi. Well, this is already again a, an idyllic country experience. Only 40 minutes out of Paris, which is nice. We're in the slow boat apparently. We started out with a really good head start, and uh, these guys are crushing us right now. Who knows? There are people rowing, there are people fishing. You can fish here as well. Like all these little houses right on the river. If this was humid, I'd think that we were like somewhere in Louisiana right now. And these guys are just swerving around in front of us. So we'll see if we have any collisions. But so far, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep relaxing. She, she heard me say that we were in the slow boat and she took that as a personal challenge. Now we're catching up. Well, the bikes are free. The boats do cost a little bit. I think it's like 70 euros for a seven person one for an hour. There's a rate sheet. It's worth it if you fill a boat up with five, seven, or 11 people, depending on the size of the boat. It all works out to be like actually very affordable. And you can have a picnic and wander, keep it for a few hours. This is really, really, really chill. And if you're gonna do this, you can rent these boats in Paris, but you don't have nearly this much space. It's not nearly this quiet. And uh, this way, uh, there's nobody crazy peeing into the water next to you while you're, you know, wandering up the canal. It's pretty great for that. That was super chill. I liked it. I needed a little bit more uh, tiny electric boat time in my life. This is how real Instagram photos are made. An artist at work. The burgers came with the Brie de Meaux, so it's the local Brie, like the local cheese, which is really good, it's tasty. Anyways, what was that? Oh, we're gonna go visit it? Yeah. All right. All right, van taxi ride. Here we go. Apparently, there's even more bikes you can pick up here, which is great. And then go. <laughs> I've also donated my jacket to a very cold <laughs> Instagrammer. Oh, you can yeah take the bikes and actually go out and visit the entire battle site, which is what we're about to learn about because we're at the we're finally at the museum. Based on the hats I've seen so far, I'm thinking World War One, but we're about to find out. So that statue was a gift from the Americans to the French in solidarity after the war, which is cool. And she she says that it's their Statue of Liberty, so you gotta you gotta know it. Museum for the entire First World War, but based around the the Battle of the Marne, as far as I understand it. And that's what we're gonna go see here at this vantage point. And they prepared coffee for us. So I'm not strong in the World War I history. It's one of those areas that I've actually been really curious to learn more about. This is the National Museum for World War I, so I'm about to learn a lot. There are multiple museums in France. Of course, this is the best, as we've been told. But uh, we do have the American gift to the French here in commemoration of the soldiers who died in the Battles of the Marne. I guess it was the first Battle of the Marne, and this isn't specifically for the first Battle of the Marne, which is the river we were floating on earlier, but here's a little bit of a history nut for you. That was the like strategic stopping point for the Germans because we're only about 50 kilometers away from Paris right now, and it was the last chance to stop them before they just marched straight through the rest of France. And thankfully, they were able to push them back from here. So that's what we're gonna be learning about a little bit more here. 
in a minute. because it starts back way before the actual First World War to the creation of the German Empire, everything that went with that, the industrialization of war, and just kind of walks you through from like 1870, I think, all the way through the battle. It's immersive, they've got sound, they've got all of these guys dressed up from like French guys over here to German guys in the middle, Polish guys on the other side. They've got a great collection of uniforms and I think there's like 60,000 different pieces in this collection and we're only gonna see like 10% of it is what she said. So there's a lot going on here. I think the pigeon bus is my favorite part so far, by far. quite the collection. I kind of wish that we had the time to go do the full because they've got the battlegrounds here that you can go and view by bike and visit the entire thing. We won't get to do that this time, but uh, if I come back, I'm definitely doing that. And she said there was an example of an American, African Americans that came over to fight weren't allowed to carry arms. The American, I guess, uh, the American army wouldn't arm them. They're like, yeah, they can work or whatever. So they were given over to the French to use. So there's a guy here apparently who's dressed in an American uniform, but with French weapons and a French helmet. That's what I want to see. Cool to see the collections because you can see the comparison between when the war started and when it ended. Like the uniforms at the very beginning were very bright, colorful, identified you based on your nationality really clearly, and towards the end they're all camouflaged. Similarly, there were soap, the soap ration of a German soldier at the beginning of the war versus the soap ration at the end of the war, and how effective the blockades against the Germans were to basically just, you know, ruin a lot of good stuff for them, including their soap supplies. So it's fascinating to see the combination and the juxtaposition of those things. This is another really good one. In 1914, they used pilots would drop these by the handful out of their plane by themselves, which who knows how well much that had an impact. And by 1918, they were dropping these from horses to tanks. It's crazy. She's Well, that was really cool. They did a really good job. It feels very somber and respectful. The collection is obviously really impressive. The wind out here is uh, something with which to contend. Holy cow, is the wind bad today? But aside from that, this is really nice. If you're a World War One buff or you just want to learn a little bit about World War One, I, I think for me the biggest thing really was seeing those juxtapositions of where the war started to where the war ended, both in like rations and weaponry, armor, planes, everything. Like just seeing how far everything came in those four years and just how quickly, it's shocking. I tend to think of World War I just as a war in the trenches, but there was so much more that was going on and the evolution of the whole thing is fascinating. So if you wanna come out to Mo, ride your bikes along the river, ride boats along the river, go to a World War I museum, seems very worth it to me. And here are horses off speakers too. We're gonna to jump back in the taxis, I think, and then uh, head to the center of town so we can see the historic center of Mo and the cathedral and all that. And uh, then I think that's about it. I could check the schedule, but that's my guess.
Deux mots. Bonjour, merci. All right, we're at the house of the Brie de Meaux. This is the regional specialty is Brie, which is exciting. Those guys with their hats, officially my favorite part. I thought my favorite part was gonna be, you know, I don't know what my favorite part was gonna be, but that was, that was it. It was definitely that. Au sens un peu plus large, et puis d'autres produits, donc qui sont aussi des produits de mots tels que la moutarde, la moutarde de mots que vous avez derrière. Ah oui. Juste un peu celui qui a la plus belle voix. Messieurs, vas-y. Je vous en prie. Un, deux, trois. Charlemagne serait ici, il nous réclamerait du bruit. Et retournerait au tombeau si c'était du bruit de mots. Ah, 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 ah sacré Charlemagne, sacré Charlemagne. Vous aurez les autres couplets après. Ah, ah trop bien. Bravo. Sacré Charlemagne, sacré Charlemagne. On reconnaît notre bruit à la croûte aussi fleurie que la barbe du bon roi. Ah, 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 sacré Charlemagne, sacré Charlemagne. Je suis prêt. Reprenez donc mes amis une lichette de brie Avec un verre de champagne, il sera meilleur ainsi Ah 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 Sacré Charlemagne, sacré Charlemagne Bravo à tous Oui, definitely my favorite part Alors vous avez vu, on a un cadre quand même assez incroyable Fresh, fresh from the farm. On va pouvoir venir en novembre quand on fait la grande fête du Brie. Ah oui. 14 et 15 novembre. Marché, euh, grand marché gourmand ici, oui. animation de cuisine et grande fête populaire le soir avec les confrères. Une hein, soirée disco pour fêter les 40 ans euh, de l'AOP. Bon, excellent. <rire> Well, that was really nice. Had a good time. We be, uh, cathedral's right by the train station, so we're just gonna walk back over there, hop on the train, head home. Thanks to today's patron producer, Rachel Ambrose, for making today possible, for sending me out here. I really appreciate it. I had a grand old time. I took so much footage that my camera died. So we'll see how I put this together, and hopefully it's an interesting video, and if you ever want to come out to Mo, you get some Brie de Mo. Highly recommended. It was delicious. Had a great time. Everybody out here was really nice, and the cheese masters, they made the whole trip, so. Can't recommend it enough. Now let me get a ticket and head home. Oh.